So these are three of my GoV thermohygrometers. The one up top here is the H5100. This one is the H5075, and this is the H5074. I've had the H5100 for quite a while, but I bought the H5075 and the H5074 because GoV support told me the H5075 supported automation. I'm guessing the H5074 does as well. H5100 does not support automation. Now, automation is for things like pairing it GoV plugs. So both of these can actually control a plug. So say the humidity gets too high, you want to turn on a dehumidifier, or the humidity gets too low, you want to turn on a humidifier. Or temperature gets too high, you want to turn on an air conditioner. Temperature gets too low, you want to turn on a cooler. Or you just want to turn a light on or... or have some other action related to temperature or humidity, both of these devices support triggers that work in automation. We can see that by going over here to automation, and we're gonna go under auto run, and we're gonna click plus sign, and then under if, and we can select which devices are triggered. Both the H5075 and H5074 support temperature high, temperature low, humidity high, and humidity low. So what we can do here is say it's 64.2 degrees right now, and we want something to happen when the temperature gets to say 65 degrees. So we'll come in here, temperature higher than 65 degrees. We gotta give it a name first, so high temp. And then we wanna have an instant action and we're going to turn on the second outlet. Okay, and we're done. Okay, so now I'm going to heat this up by holding in my hand. And there we go. 65 degrees, light came on. So you can also see that it, we can trigger by humidity. So let's add another trigger. If humidity lower than 53, then off. Let's see if we can get it in time. And there we go. So we triggered on temperature uh, high and humidity low. And that's pretty much why you would want the H. 5074 over the H5075. Now, H5075 has a display and it takes uh, AAA batteries, two AAA batteries. The 5100 takes one AAA battery. Now, this one, the H, uh, 5074 takes this pretty large coin cell battery. But it's a CR2477. I anticipate that battery being a little harder to find and a bit more expensive than a AAA. So might be something you want to have a good supply of ahead of time. The other thing to note, is that both the 5100 and the 5075 seem to be fairly responsive on their temperatures. I've had these things sitting here for a while just to check calibration, and I've kind of messed it up playing with them. The 5074 is taking a lot longer for the temperature to come down just from unboxing and handling it. And 10 minutes later, it's still not down to room temperature. You can see this one's raised 65.1, and that one's reading 64.6, and this one is uh, 65.8. And room temperature right now is 64 degrees. This is a traceable thermometer. It was calibrated to a standard, so uh, we can be pretty sure that this one is accurate. None of these devices support temperatures outside of negative four degrees Fahrenheit, which is kind of a shame because I use them below negative four degrees Fahrenheit. They do work in freezers. I've had them in freezers down to negative 16 degrees and they have continued to work.
So it's a bit of a shame that the app itself only supports things down to four degrees. I've also noticed that it might be related to the sensor. That might be what the sensor in them is rated for. Inkbird makes a comparable thermo from Hygrometer that appears to use the same sensor. And that particular unit also has the negative four low, whereas other Inkbird uh, sensors have a lower limit. So that might be a manufacturer's official spec on the sensor and Govee is just playing it safe and not letting you set temperature alarms outside that range. If you like this video, check out my Govee playlist where I've got quick setup guides on other Govee products.